Hi and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to go through a sync and a wait in Flutter and the basics of concept in Flutter and Dart. We are going to answer these questions. What is a sync and a wait? How to use it? How does it affect code execution? How to handle results and errors in a sync and a wait? So basically, what is a sync and await? It is called asynchronous programming. Asynchronous programming lets your program complete work while waiting for another operation to finish. For example, you are fetching data over a network or writing to a database or reading data from a file. These operations take some time to complete. For example, if you want to fetch data over a network, for example, if you want to retrieve an image, it takes some time to open a socket to the network and then to send the request and wait for the image and then download the image and then show the image in your app. So this takes a while and it is not an instant operation. On the left side, you can see synchronous operation we have process a and then we go to process b and then when it is completed we go to process a and we continue in this interval we wait for the response from process b but in asynchronous operation in process a when we reach a point that we go to process b we continue working on process A and we don't wait for process B to finish. After process B is finished, the result is received by process A and the operation is completed. So how we can use this asynchronous programming? Using some keywords, we can use this feature in Dart specifically. For example, we have future as a keyword, we have async as a keyword, and we have await as a keyword. Future is like a data type. A future represents the results of a synchronous operation, and it can have two states, uncompleted or completed. You can see here we have uncompleted status, which means that the operation is ongoing and it's not finished yet. After it is finished, we have two possibilities one completed with data which means it is successful or it is completed with error which means it was unsuccessful how does it affect code execution depending on your case the execution can be two cases one if you have to wait for the operation to finish and two if you have to continue and go back to the operation when it is finished for example if you are making french toast and you don't have egg to make the french toast you ask your friend to go and buy some eggs in the meantime you are going to wait for your friend to buy the eggs and come back and then you continue the cooking or while your friend is out buying the eggs you can prepare other ingredients for example, you can prepare the oil, you can prepare the toast, and so on. So you can see in the example, either you can wait for the operation to finish and then you continue, or you can continue your work while the operation is ongoing. Before going through this slide, let's go through an example. In this example, I have a main function, and then in the main function, I wait for some operation and then I print I'm waiting here. This waiting for operation is an example. It can be writing to a database or retrieving data over the network. And we define wait for me operation as a function. In the function, we return a value. When we return a value and it takes some time for the operation to finish, the return data type will be future. And when in a function we have a waiting process and we have to wait for some operation to finish, we have async 
keyboard after the function name and we have await before calling the function. So in this case, wait for me, waits for three seconds and say now I'm done. In this case, we have main function and then we call await wait for me. When you have await, it means that we have to wait for this operation to finish and then we continue. If you run this function, we can see you have started and after a while, we have now I am done and I was waiting here. Let's see how first we call the main function and then we call await for me. It goes to this function. It prints started. Now we see the started and then after three seconds, it says I am now I am done and the console shows now I am done and then goes back to the main function and says I was waiting here. So as you can see, the main function waits for this function to finish and then continues. Now let's check another example. Now in this example, we have the main function but the difference is that we don't have a wait before calling wait for me. We just call wait for me and then we call dot then print something and then print I was waiting here. Let's run this main. And you can see when we call main it calls wait for me. Inside the wait for me it says started so we have started in the console and because we didn't ask it to wait it continues and it ignores this part it continues and it goes to this line print I was waiting here so it prints I was waiting here after three seconds when it is done it goes back to the main function it says now I am done it says now I am done in the console and then when it is finished it says I am more done than you. This one prints on the screen. So as you can see we can have await or we can have dot then. It's a bit confusing when to use this one, when to use that one. So for this reason I prepared this diagram. When you have a code execution you either have to wait or you don't need to wait. For example, if you have to wait for something like you need to verify user's status and then continue some operation. You cannot continue the operation unless you verify the user. So in this case, you have to wait. When you have to wait, you use the keyword await before the operation. And when it is done, you can check the result using if to see whether the result is successful or not. Or you can use try and catch. Let's see an example for this one. Here I have future builder and in the future I have this function. And when it is done, I check if the snapshot has errors, I do something. For example, return text, there was an error. This is an example of checking the result using if. You can also use try and catch. The second way is that you don't need to wait. In this case, you just continue your operation in your app and when the function is finished, it performs some operation. For example, if the operation is successful, you use dot then, as we saw in the previous example. Here, wait for me dot then. Basically we are saying that after wait for me is finished and it is successful, run this code between the curly braces. And you can say that if it is unsuccessful, do something which you can use catch error. As we have in this example, this is the future operation and we have dot then. If it is successful, print a value and if catch error print the error and there is a third case where either case 
you use when completed. Either it is successful or unsuccessful, you want to do something with your operation. For example, you want to show a message that the operation is completed regardless of the result whether it is successful or unsuccessful. So this is the basic blueprint that you can follow in your app to get the results in the case you have to wait or in the case you don't need to wait. I hope this was clear and I hope this is helpful for you in using the asynchronous operation in your application. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.